Move over, Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch. There is a new Sherlock Holmes in town, or an old one, I should say, because today I'm going to be reviewing the 1922 film Sherlock Holmes starring John Barrymore. Hello, I am Rob, and thank you very much for checking out R&B Reviews, where we try to give informative reviews of movies that are in theaters as well as out on DVD. The 1922 silent film Sherlock Holmes is a film that I've wanted to see for such a long time. It stars theater and film icon John Barrymore, and not too many silent films featuring the great master detective exist anymore, so I thought that the film would be a real treat to see. Uh, it's based on the famous 1899 play by actor-writer uh, William Gillette that broke a lot of ground in the Sherlock Holmes mythology, such as Sherlock Holmes wearing a deer, deer stalker outfit, the famous elementary, my dear Watson, which is not in any of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's books, and the now identified, you know, curved pipe that Sherlock Holmes is often seen smoking in many of the older films. Um, the film opens where Sherlock Holmes is a student at Cambridge. His friend John Watson asks him to help his classmate, a young European prince, who was accused of stealing the athletic department's funds. Years later, that same prince calls on Holmes and Watson again because a woman named Alice Faulkner has incriminating letters that could ruin, lead him to ruin if they fall into the wrong hands, such as the criminal mastermind Professor Moriarty, Holmes' longtime enemy that he has vowed to break down. John Barrymore uh, was a very famous actor whose nickname was The Great Profile because the side of his face was very distinctive. You do see it quite a lot in this movie. He was in the theater where he was doing stuff like Shakespearean plays, and he was also a leading man. And he later became a major movie star, appearing in the 1920 classic horror film Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And he would go on to appear in talkies such as Grand Hotel, the 20th Century, Dinner at Eight, and Svengali. Barrymore, I think, makes, makes a fine, laid-back Holmes. He seems, to, to me, he seems a little bit too old to be a college student, but I think he made a fine adult Holmes, so his portrayal is not as energetic as, let's say, Basil Rathbone or Jeremy Brett. And as for the film itself, I did kind of find it to be a little bit disappointing and uneven. I ended up watching the film twice. Uh, the first time, I was really disappointed in it, but one thing I realized after I watched it was, it's not really a mystery, it's, but more of a melodrama. Um, Otherwise, I think if you try it, otherwise, if you, if you treat it like it's another mystery Sherlock Holmes film, you're going to be trying to look for stuff that's not there, which is what I discovered when I watched the film a second time. I liked it a little bit more when I treated it more like an old-fashioned melodrama, but I think it could have been much, much more. The movie starts out very well with an impressive overhead shot of London and setting up suspense with the dramatic scenes of the villainous Professor Moriarty. Just looking at him, you can tell he is evil. There is even a shot of his face superimposed over a spider's web with a title card comparing him to a spider looking for his prey. Because it is a silent, filmmakers had to do things visually. I think the actor playing Moriarty I thought was one of the film's standouts, creating a sly, demonic sort of character. The play itself didn't have a backstory, but I think having it in the film may help the viewers get into what is going on later on. However, I think the film did pick up when the case involving incriminating letters became the focus point. Sometimes I wish that uh, Sherlock Holmes was a talkie instead of a silent film because it's based on a play which is more verbal oriented while silent film is definitely more visual oriented. I, think the f I thought the film overused title cards where other silent films like Nosferatu and Phantom of the Opera relied on facial expressions from the actors and movement to convey to the audience what the character is thinking. The title cards I felt more like they cut into the action rather than help it. Director Albert Parker I thought had a hard time keeping the film moving when it is slacking a bit and to create more visuals which I think helps silent films such as lighting. For example, there are a few scenes in Moriarty's lair that uses shadows to add to the mood and suspense, but in most other scenes it just feels bland. There is also a scene where Holmes is observing people at Cambridge making philosophical observations and that scene kind of goes on a bit too long. He tries to deduce information about them from their behavior, but I would like to have seen him maybe observing someone in particular on a little, you know, amateur case, or perhaps engaging in some sort of experiment. I really did not feel involved in the story. I think it's because you know who is behind it. There is really no mystery or clues to follow, and not a whole lot of surprises. For example, you see Moriarty plan his traps for Holmes. When you get into an interesting scene, sometimes there is something ju that just stops it, like, for example, a close-up of Sherlock Holmes thinking about the leading lady, Alice Faulkner. 
Speaking of Alice Faulkner, like the play, it tries to create a romantic love connection between Sherlock Holmes and Alice Faulkner. I think they did that because John Barrymore was a romantic leading man in many plays and movies. But I think people that are familiar with the character want Holmes to be solving cases and not fall in love. Carol Dempster is Alice Faulkner in the film. I thought she was alright, but I didn't think she was quite as memorable as some other um, silent um, leading ladies that had great dramatic expressiveness like Mary Pickford or Gloria Swanson or even the Gish sisters. Watson has very little to do in the film. He is not really Sherlock Holmes' sidekick involved in the case as he's usually shown, but I think Roland Young, who plays Watson in the film, who would go on to be a fine character actor in Hollywood films, does what he can with the role, and I really enjoyed watching him at times, sometimes even more than Sherlock Holmes himself. The movie was lost for years, and its reconstruction started back in the 1970s, and was finally completed just in 2001. There are stat sadly still missing bits, and you may notice characters appearing out of nowhere or jumping from one place in a room to another. The dramatic scene when Moriarty visits Holmes at Baker Street is still missing large chunks that make it go by faster, as well as a scene that is set inside a gas chamber. I would probably recommend this movie more to John Barrymore fans as well as fans of silent films as, and melodramas, uh, but I do offer a word of caution to Sherlock Holmes fans as well as mystery fans. I thought it was okay, but not quite as good as I hoped. As a melodrama, I think it's fine, but as a mystery and a Sherlock Holmes film, it's kind of disappointing. Again, I thought most of the performances were pretty good. I liked some of the visual things that were done, like I said, uh, the stuff involving Professor Moriarty, but the plotting and the pacing kind of plotted along, and for a silent film, it's pretty talky, surprisingly. So uh, that's my review of John Barrymore's Sherlock Holmes movies. Um, it's available on Kino Video. Um, if, you have any, if you have seen this film, go ahead and post your comments, or if you have any comments about the video itself, uh, go ahead and post that too. Thank you very much for watching.